running rigging delivered. Italian company, Gotifredi Mafioli. And uh, our friend Luca will definitely show us or teach us how to pronounce it correctly. But this is fabulous. This is pesto green, by the way. Unfortunately, there was so much noise in the shipyard the day that we shot this video that we can't use the audio, except for a couple small clips that we'll show later. In an upcoming video, you'll be able to hear a lot more about and from our good friend Luca Repetto. I give out the core yeah. from the from the soak. Yeah. And I make a loop. Okay. Now I recover with the soak. Yeah. And I I make a a loop. Okay. Just open loop. Yeah. So at the difference of the losing type, you can change the uh, shackle if you break or if you lose. When it came time to order the sheets, we could pick mostly any color we wanted, and we thought it would be pretty fun to name or pick the color that correlated with some food, like curry, lemon, salt and pepper, saffron, pesto, just blueberry. to name a few. Yeah, blueberry. <laughs> we can't express enough how impressed we are with Goto Freddy Mafioli and the materials that they produce. Our lines and sheets are just beautiful. At a certain point when you're doing the whipping, the sheets become so dense that it's really hard to push the needle through all the way. So you need like a block of wood like we're using here to help push the needle through. One thing you don't want to do is wiggle the needle back and forth because eventually you'll break the needle. You might also need to pull the needle through with a pair of pliers like Luke is doing here. It took us a couple tries to get the whipping right, but eventually we were able to follow along and whip some sheets just like Luca was doing. They're not quite as professional looking as his, but they certainly are better looking than melting or gluing the ends of our lines. I wanted to show in more detail the end of our Jenniker halyard that Luca just produced, because I think it's really cool. And this is what they do on the racing boats that he was in. So we have our halyard. It's a Giotto Freddy halyard. It's a Dyneema core, and it's got a nice uh, soft sheath over the top. This is what he calls a sock in the video. I don't know if you could hear it very well, but he calls this the sock. So what he did is he took the core out of the sheet. He looped it around itself and put the core back into itself and ran the end of this piece of Dyneema to about right here. I can feel it starts to get pliable right there, but you can see how stiff this is. There's two pieces of Dyneema in there. And then he pulled the outer sheath back over itself so that this core and the loop was uh, inside this, uh, I'm going to use his terms again, the sock. 
And then he did a whipping, and I'll show that in a second. And then he cut the sock off, leaving the loop. Why this is important is because when you have hardware on the end of one of these, the hardware can break, and he was pointing to this pin as a common failure point. So what they do on a racing boat is they make this loop so that they can loop it through a piece of hardware and it's attached quite firmly. But if the hardware should break, they can take this hardware off quickly, put a new one on again quickly, and be off and racing. It's stronger than it would be by itself and it's really quick to change. The whipping is really cool to see. And according to Luke again, maybe it's easier to see against my shirt, they do a 30 degree whip and an odd number of crossings and an odd number of threads across this. And generally the number of, of wraps that you do here equals the, di the diameter of the sheet that you're whipping. So it's really cool, and we're really proud to have this piece of uh, history and tradition on our boat, even though it's not a racing boat. I think this is just brilliant, and uh, we're really lucky to have all the experience and wisdom and knowledge that Luke is handing down to us. It's really an honor to have his work on our boat. I wanted to show what else he's taught us. This is our main halyard, the end of it. And he was telling us any line that goes to the top of the mast, you need to do this to. And you know, in all the sailing that we've done, no one has shown us this. It's not in the classes that we've taken or anything. Uh, granted, it's not a lot of sailing, but it's really cool to have this experience and knowledge passed down to us. So what he was explaining was, you put a loop in the end of this line so that if you leave your boat for any period of time, you can run a very inexpensive piece of line up through the, the length of our main halyard to take this down and store it so it's out of weather and out of the sun for the, the length of time that it's stored. And what he did is you take the sheath of the line down, you cut the Dyneema core out of it, and then you feed this, what he keeps calling the sock, it's the sheath of this line down into itself. And then you put just this stitch right through the middle of it. And this is a piece of, of Dyneema whipping cord. It's gone through, I think, nine times. So it's tacked in there really well. This empty sheath or sock or uh, this outer sheath comes down to where the dynamic core ends. So there's very little difference in diameter between uh, where it's just sheath inside and where it's back to the dynamic core. Our halyards all have this loop on the ends so that we can run inexpensive line up through and store these out of the weather. The lines that don't go up through the mast are blunted like this one. And what we've done here is we cut the inner core out, maybe about this far down. Then you have this outer sock or this outer sheath. You feed back into itself. You bring it down to where you made the cut of the core. And then you just tack it with some whipping thread back and forth. Again, tradition is nine or an odd number of times. Tighten a knot and you have a really, what I think is a really elegant looking end to one of your lines. The difference is, this is one of our old lines and it's been melted on the end, which is, you know, you can do. It just looks like a melted piece of rope though as opposed to maybe a more traditional way to do things. Here are more examples of that uh, loop with whipping that it, I showed you a minute ago. These are the end of our reef lines. 
They're attached to an endless loop piece of Dyneema. Let's see if I can make heads or tails. So there you go, there's one. Uh, Kay made this one, you can see in another part of the video. But they're really cool. They also have, each one of them has their own button knot soft shackle. And we really like this system, it's really cool. So here's the giant pile of running rigging that we replaced with the Gotifedi Mafiore running rigging. This stuff is so heavy. That's what I'm so impressed with these uh, uh, lines are. They're just light as can be. These, I don't know how much this all weighs together. I don't know if I could lift it all at the same time. So I'm gonna say it's about 90 pounds, maybe more. So uh, unbelievable. I think we showed you some of the, the complete set, but it's so pretty. <laughs> so this week we finished making and installing the new jack lines. These, these are made of, um, I think what, four millimeter Dyneema. And Luca showed us how to splice and whip the stitching um, to create the jack lines. And they're amazing. Everything looks so much better now with the new running rigging. I feel like we have a real boat. Is this the thank you thing? Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you everyone for watching. We really appreciate it. And we would love to hear from you, so please leave comments and questions. Oh yeah, if you like the video, <laughs> please like and subscribe.